what's up guys welcome back to the channel uh, so today we're going to be doing something a little bit different we're going to be working on uh, this momentum 21g toy hauler it does come equipped with a onboard generator which is a cummins onan 4000 they are a bit problematic uh, mine was problematic as well um, but i think i have a fix to the most common issue with these which is surging and stalling when they're hot um, so let's get right into it all right guys so the main problem uh, that I was having with my Cummins uh, Onan generator was that uh, it would start no problem. You just press the prime button a couple seconds with the start button and it would turn over no problem. Ran perfect, no issue for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, and then what would happen is, and this is extremely common, I've been doing a lot of research over the last few weeks just trying to figure out what the solution could possibly be. Um, and uh, what would happen is that it would start to surge, the RPMs would kind of go up and down and up and down, and eventually it would just stall out. So uh, a lot of the, the common issues people were saying were, uh, you know, the oil was kind of over full and uh, there's like an oil pressure or oil level sensor on these um, that if it's too full, it'll shut them down. So I pulled some oil out of it. It was actually um, a little bit over full. So I pulled some oil out of it and um, still no no fix to the to the problem right so i'm like okay so i swapped the uh fuel pump out that was also another common uh issue on these which was the the fuel pump going bad uh and not supplying enough fuel pressure to the carburetor so swapped out the fuel pump um did not change the filter which i should have I already have one on order uh thinking that was my problem that i didn't change the fuel filter but uh regardless it seemed to help um but then the other night letting the, the generator run, trying to cool down my unit, and same thing, about an hour, hour and a half goes by, shuts down. So um, what, I, what I did was, once it shut down, I opened the bottom of the carburetor, there's like a little screw, and that's the drain for the float bowl. When I did that, right after it shut down, it was bone dry. And so I'm like, okay, well, it's not getting fuel. So I pulled the fuel line, and there was no fuel on the fuel line. It was bone dry, like I hadn't ran it at all, even though it had just been running for over an hour. Hit the prime button and the fuel pump was kicking on. However, no fuel was coming out. So the only thing that was coming out was like a vapor. So I did a little research. And um, so fuel, if it gets too hot, just basically turns to vapor. So that's what was happening. So the, the problem is these Cummins generators, they have their fuel pumps and the main fuel line and everything fuel related encased inside the generator where all the heat is. So for me, I think it's a design flaw. And I think it's really what's contributing to a lot of problems with these generators is that these fuel pumps are just getting too hot and it's not allowing the correct uh, amount of fuel pressure. And it's, it's actually vaporizing the fuel before it can even get to uh, the carburetor, which can cause a lot of problems because it can run lean, it could run hot and potentially damage the motor if there's not enough fuel. So what I did is, is this. So what I did was, this is kind of like a temporary mock-up. This is not finished yet. I'm gonna be showing you guys what I'm gonna be doing today to finish this. But what I did was, I took this, fuel, this is the fuel pump, this is the fuel filter. This is the line coming in from the fuel tank, goes through the filter, in through, and this is the main fuel line that goes up into the carburetor. So this is usually tucked in under here. I'm gonna pull this cover so you guys can see it. So this is usually all the way back there. And there's a fan here um, and it's, it's just gets really hot in there, right? And then the fuel line runs up under through here, comes under here and then runs around. So literally this fuel line is right through here, right in the hot side. This is kind of blocked off. This is more of like the cool intake side but still gets very hot, right? Like still, it's still operating next to the hot engine. So this whole, in, this whole area here is just very, very hot, right? So what I did was I had enough fuel line, I actually have extra fuel line here. I'm not sure if somebody maybe swapped this out at one point <clears throat> for a longer fuel line, but this fuel line went all the way back there and snaked in through the side. So what I did was when I pulled this out, I was able to cut this fuel line short, hook it right up. And then this is the fuel line. I actually had some like uh, some insulation, tape I, I gotta really tape this up a little bit better but i just wanted to kind of double insulate and this has uh some plastic underneath it as well so I, I still have to mock this up i really just wanted to see if this was was going to help at all before i you know made everything kind of permanent um 
and it did. So I ran the, the generator for about four hours and it's hot. You know, it's 95, 96 degrees in Florida right now, middle of the summertime, and it did not shut off. It didn't surge. It actually seemed to idle a lot smoother as well. The idle wasn't all over the place like it usually is. Um, and this really seemed to help. And, you know, even just opening this door flap uh, and just touching everything, it just felt like it's warm, obviously, right? You still have fuel pressure going through there. There's still some some bit of heat in here, but it's not, it was not nearly as hot. You couldn't even touch this before because it was so hot. Uh, same thing with the fuel line. So I just wanted to try to keep everything as cool as possible. And um, yeah, it seems to work. So the only thing I have to do still is there's this wire here and it's just two, two wires that are coming out of here. One is going to ground, the other one's going to a power switch that kicks the fuel pump on. I have to extend those wires um, just so that this, this can't go through here because now the, the door won't close right. So I have to either drill a little pilot hole to send the wires through uh, or figure something else out. I think I'm just gonna drill a small hole and just send the wires up through. Um, and then I just have to mount this. I think I'm just going to mount this to the side here with like a self tapper. So it doesn't move around right now. I just kind of have it, you know, zip tied. So it wasn't bouncing around too much, but like I said, I just wanted to make sure that this was, um, the solution to the problem before I put everything into place permanently. But yeah, guys, this was the main problem, I think. And, you know, obviously I was able to narrow it down to a fuel problem, but now that, you know, I moved the fuel pump and moved the fuel line. It seems that, you know, everything is, is 100%, but I'm going to run the, as soon as I get done moving everything, I'm going to start it up again. I'm going to let it run for like the whole day. You know, it's it's five o'clock now, so I'll let it run all day into the night and see what happens. But uh, yeah. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to have to do is remove the battery. We don't want any power back there, especially because we're going to be working with the wiring and we're right near some fuel, which is not a good combination. So always disconnect the battery first. All right, guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, disconnect these lines here. I'm going to pull the fuel pump out of the way um, so that we can uh, start working on this. All right, guys. So next, we just got to get these two uh, screws out the way. This way we can get this board out um, and then we can start uh, getting the wiring undone for the fuel pump so we can move it out the way entirely and start extending the wires. So you got to disconnect this connector. Just kind of uh, you pull up on this and it disconnects. And then next what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove that. I think it's a 13 mil to get the power wire out of the way. And then after that, we'll have to undo that bolt to get this solenoid out of the way. And then we can take everything out. All right, guys, so we got everything out of the way. So now these are the wires we're going to be extending. This is the hot wire for the fuel pump. And then down here, you can see there's a try to tuck it down in there. There's a ground right there. We have to undo that bolt. And then that's going to be the other wire we're going to have to extend. It's just power and ground uh, for these. So let's go ahead and get those undone so we can get the fuel pump out of the way and then we can extend the wires. All right, guys, so we've got the fuel pump out. Uh, so now we just have to extend this ground and put an eyelet on it. And then um, we're gonna have to extend this power wire and just put one of those blade uh, ends on it so it'll plug back in. Um, then once the wiring is, is long enough, we can uh, drill a little pilot hole at the bottom there to run the wiring. We'll insulate everything. Um, and then we should be good to go there. And then all we have to do is just mount that to the outside of the generator and we should be good to go. So up here, um, cut the old wires, the old connectors off, uh, soldered and uh, heat shrunk the wires on. Made them probably about 15, 14 inches longer. Um, so this should be plenty now to have an extra, enough room to where it's not pulling on the wires so hard. Uh, so now we just gotta drill a hole in the bottom of the generator so we can run these wires. And I'm just gonna run this over the wires. I think I have, uh, more of this that I can just wrap the, the wires in so that they're not exposed to the heat. Um, but yeah, let's finish all right, it up. guys, so we're making some progress here. So we got the wires all extended. Uh, I kind of screwed up. You probably saw in the the uh, last part that I just recorded, but I had the ground. Uh, the ground had the little part on the end that uh, goes into the, the power switch. And the uh, the power had the eyelet for the, that was supposed to go on the ground side. So quick fix, just had to swap them out. Um, and then, uh, so now we got everything ran through. I drilled a little hole through here and I got this wire insulation running through there. This way it doesn't touch the wires. Um, got the ground hooked up, got the power wire hooked up. So now we can put all this stuff back in, um, mount it. I got a couple of little self tappers that are just gonna mount it here on the side. And then, uh, we should be about done. Hook the, hook the fuel lines back up. We should be good to go. All right, guys, so we got everything back together. I actually decided just to um, mount the fuel pump here instead of, you know, screwing into the generator and putting another hole in it. So got everything hooked back up, all the fuel lines. Um, 
everything's back in place where it should be. So this actually keeps it a little bit farther away uh, from the generators. It's not even touching it, so that'll help, I think, as well. But um, yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire it up. And uh, it's like six o'clock right now. I'm going to let it run for, you know, four or five hours and see, uh, see what happens. It's never ran that long before. Uh, up until the other day where it ran three hours, but I really want to give it the test tonight. So I'm going to fire it up, let it run, and see how she does. All right, guys, so we're going on like four hours now. Um, generator's still running good. Uh, RPMs haven't started to surge at all. Idle's real smooth. So um, I'm going to say this is probably my, my issue is just, you know, the vapor lock, like I was saying, just the fuel pump and the fuel line getting way too hot and the fuel vaporizing before it can get to the carburetor. So... Uh, try this, you know, see if this, if this helps, right? Like when your generator shuts down, open the, the drain at the bottom of the carb, you'll see it's like a Phillips head screw. Um, see if there's any fuel that comes out of the float bowl. If it does great, then you're, you have a different problem, whether it be like a circuit board or maybe an oil pressure switch or temperature sensor, whatever. But if you're not getting fuel, um, you know, if you don't have any fuel when it shuts off, there's no fuel in the fuel line, more than likely. You're just experiencing the same thing that I have, which is the vapor lock situation. Go ahead and just relocate the fuel pump. Really didn't cost me anything, just a little bit of time. Uh, you know, there's enough enough fuel pump, uh, fuel line, and, and uh, I had some wiring laying around just to extend the wires out for the power and ground. It was pretty, pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. Um, and it might help your situation as well. So give it a try. Um, you know, again, as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. See you on the next one.